And good morning. <laughs> All right. So now we need to return to the restaurant again. Uh, because Mitriel did something and we don't precisely know what it is. Uh, she has agreed to basically capitulate to the crown's demands, actually more specifically to the, de to the demands of the critic union. And that makes me think that there is an ongoing... I mean, we've already known from the beginning that the critic union is kind of the big bad evil guys just because they sort of advertised it at the beginning. So, <laughs> uh, yeah, your mother wore combat boots. Losers. All right. <clears throat> oh, and here we go. <clears throat> so, uh, how's the new dynamic going? Mitriel and the overseer devised a new menu. All very healthy and bland. Easy to chew and swallow. Nothing dangerous at all. And how are the people liking it? They aren't. I see. Aw, oh, Zest! Mitriel has been very receptive to our suggestions. Now the restaurant is a far better place. I hear my customers don't quite agree. First you get a better restaurant, then you get better customers. You'll improve in all possible ways. I like my current customers just fine. Your restaurant deserves better. This place could be so inspiring. I mean, look at Squirk, for example. His story is a true example to highlight. Oh, really? Of course. Someone like you working at the top restaurant in Concordia. Yours is a great example of how a great artist can come from the most unlikely origins and in the most unexpected forms that anyone can be a great cook. See, to me, that's a slap in the face. I mean, if we really are all truly equal, why are we singling out people for unique... For uniqueness, why do we have to single them out if we're all truly equal? See, I just, I don't buy into that. Eh? Just what the f is that supposed to mean? Eh? This has to be the single worst insult I've ever had spat at me. Oh yeah, no kidding. I'm so, that would that's that would be a slap in the face to me. Are the screen not good enough for your liking, your highness? But, but I heard, uh, uh, but I thought, uh, uh, but I meant. You think I'm some kind of cute pet to pat on the head? I'll freaking cut you! C -c Calm down, Squirg. Uh, don't do something you'll regret. I love it. The cat girl is holding back the mouse boy. <laughs> The La Orxa Nostra <laughs> The La Orxa Nostra just took her out. <laughs> what the hell have you done to my restaurant, maggot? I thought you would take good care of the place. Then I find out you're serving bland crap. We had little choice in the matter. The Critic Union offered us a way to avoid the protests. The Critic Union... Oh, wait. <clears throat> the Critic Union played you, Zest. They played us all. They did? Yes. <clears throat> oh, boy. Her voice is so hard. Malvaviscus used your meteoric ascension to wipe out every major figure in the cooking scene. In the end, he expected to control you through restaurant reviews. But Valzoi's um, review Lucian prevented him from doing so. And worse, it was spreading. That's why he forced everyone to accept these uh, advisors. This way his views would not be able to be ignored. 
No matter what anyone else says. Wait. So you're telling me that I didn't actually win those combats? No, Zest. You won them all fair and square. His intervention was a bit more insidious than that. Do you have any proof of that? Or are we just a bunch of whiners crying about a big bad critic who gave us a boo-hoo? Not quite. There is definite proof. And you, sh uh, you all should take a look at it. Blimey, what a party. Who's left? Is Jesus going to pop out of a cake now? Angra contacted us because she found out something disturbing. Even more so than the Overseer program? You all remember how uh, Malvaviscus rode demolishing pieces attacking each of you when you were defeated by Zest. Yes. Not really. No? I don't pay attention to the news. How did you manage to get as far as you did? By defeating you all at what you do best. Hmm. Ouch. <laughs> well, take a look then. Let's start with the one regarding your fight with Torpedo. When popular doesn't mean good. A new chef's victory over the popular chef Torpedo demonstrates that cuisine should move away from the uneducated tastes of the common folk and fully embrace more elevated goals. Huh. Was I fighting against the common folk? I seem to recall that I was only trying to save my ass. It looks like you were the champion of the snobs. Here's another one from your fight with Bolton. Down with the overlords. An amateur chef dethrones the leader of the culinarium, putting an end to the traditional rules of cuisine and opening the way for a new culinary paradigm. Huh? I just wanted you guys to follow your own rules. Ah, oh, no. All of this, however, has undermined my authority, and the culinarium has been erratic since then. When this last power grab came, we didn't have, even have the strength to propose Malvaviscus. And now another one from your battle with Enzashi. When, tra when tradition becomes bigotry. Chef Anzashi's chauvinistic views on Nyarian culture proved to be her downfall. Huh. Hmm. Well, gotta say that this one is pretty spot on. But in the end, you did understand why I did what I did. There's nuance. All the nuance in the world won't take away the fact that you acted like an asshat and treated Frishka like dirt. You may want to remember that the next time you want to tell an edgy joke during an awards ceremony. Uh. <laughs> Zing! Next one, from your fight with the Festumancers. Tangible physicality brings entropy to illusionism. The Festumancers lost their grip on reality itself as their castle in the sky collapsed against a solid wall of empirical determination. Okay, I don't have a clue what the hell he's trying to say. Keep... <coughs> wait, um... Oh, how did I have her voice? Oh my god, it's been a while. Um... Oh, I don't remember her voice. Oh, well. Keep reading! I'm just gonna take it. <clears throat> so this brings us to a necessary fundamental change of our understanding of the culinary art that requires a firm guiding hand. Oh, I see. All of this is very nice, but he's entitled to his own opinion, like it or not. This doesn't end here. Take a look at these. Hmm. The short-sighted cuisine of Torpio crushes a promising new chef's hope. This proves that cuisine needs to move away from the common rabble's criteria if we want new promises to reach elevated goals. The culinarium rigid views on perfection cut short the career of a promising rising star. The culinarium's firm grasp on cuisine is choking new talent. A new paradigm is required. Chef and Zashi's bigoted ways take another victim 
and shoot down a true champion of good, and Yarian traditions need a new guardian. The chimeric infusions of the transcendent eclipse the pal uh, palpable, the palpable needs of the mundane. So this brings us to a necessary fundamental change of our understanding of the culinary art that requires a firm guiding hand. These are the articles that he uh, that Malvaviscus would have written if if Zest had lost. What is this? Some sort of a window to an alternate reality where we all sport goatees? I found these in Mal's office when he was away. He wrote the, his articles beforehand. No matter who won or lost, the conclusions were reached before the fact, and the outcome didn't influence them. Hmm. I see. That might be worth a bit more worth whining about. But heck, this guy's job is pretty much to give his opinion. You want us all to go there and say our opinion is that your opinion sucks? The critics are playing you for fools, Zest. They even tried to control you through that woman. You should grow a spine. No, not the critics. Just Malvaviscus. The others are just trying to do their job. You've been dancing to his tune since he arrived in town with his big bags of cash. Don't pretend this is not your fault. He... said he'd be able to increase our influence. He was a prestigious critic back in Volcradia. Was, as in past tense, before pitting everyone and their mothers against each other. Volcradia? You're telling me that your crazy story about meatballs was actually true? Meatballs? Never mind. The thing is, there's nothing we can do but complain. And no one likes a cook who complains about critics. It's a bit of an unwritten rule, also known as suck it up and don't be a baby. This is a bit beyond sucking it up. If we do not stand against him now, Malvaviscus is going to consolidate his grasp on cuisine and choke it. We need to go to the Critic Union Tower and make a unified statement of rejection. And then he'll just reject our rejection. No, he won't be able to. You are the epic chef, Zest. This rank comes with authority and responsibilities. If you lead a statement of rejection with support from us all, Malvaviscus will lose all his authority on the matter. We need you, Zest. Moreover, you have a duty to uphold. <sighs> all right, let's pay a visit to Malvaviscus. Good, meet us at the Eastern Gate when you're ready. Okay, so we're actually like we're we're not we're we're, we're I mean because what I was thinking is that they were going to end the whole series on this note of well we tried our best but in the end it was all for nothing but we're not doing that we're actually kind of taking a stand for uh, basically against rabble rousing. Because that really, I mean, because when it comes right down to it, that's what the critics are doing. They're rabble rousing and trying to use public, uh, public opinion to influence policy. Sound like anyone you know? Anyway, shutting up. This is not about politics. Let's go. The others are already on their way. No, nothing evil about these guys at all. <laughs> I love how they misspelled critics. <laughs> <clears throat> To what do we owe this visit? Come to tell us one of your jokes. 
We're here to put an end to your plot, Malvaviscus. What plot? Your plot to take over cuisine and rebuild it to your liking without opposition. Ah, uh, Angra. And Slothy, <laughs> an unlikely duo of traitors. Traitors to what? Will you listen to yourself, Mal? And all of you, why are you even here anymore? The Union was a mistake. The Union helps bring a unified consensus to send a clearer message. Critic consensus must be reached independently and spontaneously. That's where the actual value of consensus resides. It must not be planned and agreed upon. If our voices are not united, we risk sending an unclear message and diminish our influence on the craft. Disperse criteria will not bring improvement. Our job is to help the cooks and the public, not to control them. To describe reality, to not to reshape it. If we wanted to influence cuisine so directly, we should have become cooks ourselves. That's rich coming from you. I might have failed as a chef. Or worse, I quit. I sabotaged myself because I was too full of fear to face criticism, to expose my heart and soul to the world and risk getting stabbed. It's an inevitable part of our trade, Angra. I know. I'm not making excuses. I quit because I feared the criticism from the critics, the public, and the other chefs. But I still love cuisine with passion. And most of all, I knew how lost and vulnerable a chef can feel. I got into this to make things easier and more humane for them, not harsher and more merciless. I understand, but I didn't make this world. We have a responsibility toward the public, and we can't just be nice and forgive mistakes that will affect them. The public, eh? Is that why you keep ignoring their cries? Ah, the revolutionary. Power to the people, eh? How is that completely reliable and not at all shady system of yours working out? My system is honest. Honest indeed. Honest as a drunken brawl. But I wouldn't want... Bleh. But I wouldn't want quarrelsome drunkards at the helm of the ship, would you? Well, maybe you actually would. So everyone who disagrees with you is a quarrelsome drunkard now? Mm, perhaps not. But they are just the untrained public. And the public tends towards comfortable familiarity. The public doesn't understand the need for change and tends to immobility. If we left control of the arch to the masses, what would we get? A trillion minor variations of the same safe fish and chips recipe. Nothing groundbreaking ever again. Stagnation. The saddest thing is that they wouldn't even know what they'd be missing out on. So you simply ignore the rabble, eh? Dictate your criteria from your high and mighty tower? We don't dictate what the chefs need to do. We simply set their sights on higher goals and motivate them to spur their potential and not become redundant. You set their sights away from their patrons. That's the chef's choice alone. Choice? What choice is left for the chef when there are fanatics screaming on the streets? What choice is there when you have agents telling them what they can cook? I can hardly be held responsible for the world being full of crazy people. That's precisely why we started the Overseer program. To protect the chefs from themselves. And to perch on their shoulders like a raven. Maybe this will help them balance the weight of the raven that is perching on their other shoulder. You, you keep talking about these high concepts so much that you've lost sight of cuisine itself. 
Critics are supposed to talk about the food and give their opinion. This has gone too far. <laughs> this again. I'm tired of having to explain it over and over. Maybe you have to explain it so many times because it doesn't make any sense. Yes, it does. You're just too short-sighted to understand it. Thinking that food critics should talk about food is not being short-sighted. Then go ahead and talk about flavors and about how some bum likes to sprinkle cinnamon on top of their fries or whatever minutia you want. But we are the critic union, Slothy. More is expected from us. There are more aspects to cuisine beyond mere taste or technique. There's restaurant logistics and their impact on the city. There's values. There's the whole harmony and cultural fitting. We are the top authority in this city regarding these issues. That is what we are supposed to talk about. You don't want to? Don't do it. But you have no right to expect us to shut up. Whew, okay, okay, give it a rest, you all. This is all very interesting. You guys could spend weeks talking about this and everyone would be so very right at the same time. However, my issue with this matter is mostly one, Valva Viscus. And what would your issue be? It's pretty simple. You call yourself a critic, but you're actually acting like a dietitian. <laughs> oh, damn. You're not persuading and convincing people to adopt your values. You just dictate them and then use your authority like a hammer to crush those who don't share them. The critic union has all the right in the world to recommend, but not to impose and be obeyed, much less to try and destroy the lives of chefs who dissent. That's not what it looks like from where I'm standing. Ah, then might makes right. Sure, we could have avoided the whole discussion and just left it at, I do what I want because I can. But if this has to be all about power dynamics, then I'll humor you. As Epic Chef of Concordia and with the support of my colleagues, I officially question your authority and reject all the regulations that you've imposed on the culinary trade. Cease and desist at once and let us cook in peace. <laughs> that might have sounded a bit less impressive than it did inside your head. You think so? Because when the king is forced to choose between the whole body of chefs and some guy with a bowler hat, I think he won't even need to think about it. The whole body of chefs, eh? I doubt you'd find a single one who agrees with your current methods and isn't a huge fucker. <laughs> I love that you've put it in those terms. What do you mean? You people may have an epic chef backing you up on this issue. But as it turns out, so do I. Mitrio? I mean, we kind of knew this was coming. This isn't as big of a reveal as I think maybe they wanted it to be, but it was like, well, yeah. Your partner here came to visit me not long before your little uprising took place. An ambitious and clever woman. She is very willing to take a central role in the new paradigm that is coming to life. I've seen my fair share of surreal stuff lately, but this one takes the cake. What is this about, Mitriel? Mitriel feels that something as important as the epic chef title should not be shared with someone as irresponsible as you. This has proven a great opportunity for her to get rid of some dead weight, so to say. I'm sorry, Zest, but I challenge you 
for the full solitary title of Epic Chef. Mitriel, I don't understand. You may not know me as well as you thought then. You should have known that I am not to be trusted. I can't believe this! Mitriel, if you take the title away from Zest, he'll lose his royal protection. The Lucerians will take him away. After all we've been through together, you only care about your stupid career? You're just a rat! Eh. I, I, I meant... It's okay, I'm not happy either. So... You want to challenge my plan for a healthier, healthier Concordia Zest? Fine. But first, you'll need to answer to Mitriel's challenge for the full title. And here's where it gets better. As leader of the Critic Union, I can appoint anyone to be the judge of this match. So I appoint myself. <laughs> This is a clear conflict of interest. The king is the one who should be judging something like this, not you. The king is not very keen on acting as a judge after the last incident. So he bestowed full authority on me to select culinary combat judges through a decree. You might as well just desist now and go back home. No. Good timing on that thunderbolt. If I have to go down, let it be with a bang. I accept your challenge, Mitriel. We'll meet in the Culinarium Tower. Good! A new battle for the title shall take place. Only the winner shall retain the title of Epic Chef. I promise you all, I'll try to be a fair judge. Now get out of my tower. Well. Not only are the odds against us, the odds are literally stacked so that we can't win. I really need to get some rest. Maybe tomorrow I'll have a clearer head. The only way I can personally see out of this, we have to go talk to the king. We have to actually get an... Hello? Hey! It's the mysterious knight! <laughs> Holy cow! Hey! This is the first guy we ever battled! For those of you coming in late to the, uh, to the series. Greetings, villain! Oh, it's you. Took you long enough to show up again. I always stand vigilant, but I only show up when I feel the integrity of Concordian cuisine is in grave danger. Like when some new neighbor plants potatoes on his farm? Yeah, of course. More like when someone tries to introduce potentially cursed produce into our market. Could have been swimming in zombies in a matter of hours. Yeah, fair point. So, is now one of those times when the integrity of Concordian cuisine is in danger? Indeed. Perhaps more than ever. For the balance has been broken. Partners fighting each other over a broken title. The former paragons discredited. And the critics trapped in a choir. And all because of one man. He must be stopped. You must win this fight. Okay, you know too much too fast. You had to be at the meeting. Who I am does not matter. 
But I can offer you help. What kind of help? The true essence of my companion, Staglione, the Pegasus Pe Corn. The Pegasus Corn. I can never say that right. Uh. You almost managed to make me take you seriously. Almost. What is the problem? Again? That is not a Pegasus a Pegasus Corn. That's a donkey. A donkey! I already told you that he must conceal his true appearance. Pegasus corns provide the ultimate ingredient in these lands. You can't hide a Pegasus corn with a hat. Why not? The wings would still be there, damn it. Ah. See. There's been a fundamental misunderstanding regarding the nature of my companion. You see, a pegusicorn is not a horse with wings and a horn. <laughs> it is a horse with a horn in the shape of a pegasus. be going home now. <laughs> Wait! You obviously don't know the importance of this creature. Its horn provides the ultimate spice. A single pinch of powdered pegusicorn can make literal dirt taste like the most refined meal. That's why pegusicorns are so rare. They were hunted to the brink of extinction a long, long time ago. This creature here it's one of the last remaining ones. I wouldn't be offering this to you if it wasn't important. Mitriel knows all of your secrets, every trick in your book. She can recreate anything you do and serve it to a whole restaurant. It will be the hardest combat you've ever faced, and we cannot afford you losing. Use the spice and you will win. Not even Malvaviscus will be able to say no after bursting into uncontainable tears of joy in front of everyone. This sounds an awful lot like cheating. You've received help before. Help, advice, not a mysterious insta-win powder. Mitriel deserves a fair fight. Mitriel has betrayed you. Take the powder. You can always decide whether to use it or not. <sighs> Is that all? Yes. And who are you, then? It wouldn't make sense for you to hide your face if you were on my side to begin with. Maybe you're another critic gone rogue. Not stoop, and unless you're wearing a girdle and having a really hard time. Are you El Debner or Chris? Boy, that would be a surprise, eh? <laughs> Thought you'd also be having a hard time in there. <laughs> okay. Who do you think it is? Got some people saying I'll bet you it's the king. I'm kind of thinking it's Mitriel. I think Mitriel is 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 setting herself up to lose. She 
She said she wanted to handle this her way. And while she has been kind of a pain in the butt this entire time, I think deep down she actually genuinely likes Zest. The king would be a really cool, co uh, 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 a real good. Uh, uh, I mean, and it would make sense too. Who else but the king would have a pegusicorn? This super rare animal. So I'm absolutely down with the possibility that this might be the king. And I think actually that would make a great deal of sense. At the same time, I can't help but think that this is Mitriel. And it has been Mitriel the entire time. Hmm. <laughs> My job here is complete. Everything rests in your hands now. Good luck, Zest. Yeah, well, goodbye. All right, so looks like the mysterious knight's gonna, not going to reveal themselves, but... Hmm. And if you know, do not do spoilers. If you already know what it is, do not do spoilers. I'm, I'm absolutely serious. I'll ban you from my channel right now. Don't do it. Because this is too good. <laughs> uh, all right. So, okay. Um, so, yeah. All we have at this point is just do this. I guess we ought to prepare. We ought. We need to get set up and prepare for the battle. So we've got our setup here. We've got the setup here. Let me just check my my battle ingredients just in case I need to fight this out. So I've got the spirit potato. I've got okay. I've got the three sauces. I've got backup three sauces. I've got two triclopses. I've got my t uh, my three breaded spider legs. I've got two spider flesh, two crab. I already said two triclopses. I've got the spirit silk. I've got the shell fondue. I've got the katsubushi. I've got the golden jellyfish. And I have backups of each one. Oh, and also, oops, hey. Lion, maybe you should grab it out. Hmm? Maybe, maybe. I mean, I well, I guess I don't necessarily want to take it right now. But I also have my throwaway ingredients in case uh, in case they uh, they throw they throw one of those negative everything at me. Yeah, I think we've got a I think we've got a good battling system here. Plus, we have extra ingredients in him, extra ingredients in the link container. I, I think I think we are ready to go. Dragon egg, yeah. Oh, Miz, what the hell am I gonna? I guess it would have to be Pangan. Let's let's take a look at um, let's let's take a look at Pangan, and see if maybe we can get ourselves a dragon egg. So milk and apples. Ugh, do I have enough to be able to do? Let's see. Um, Pangan. Oh, it's just two. Two and a ghost tato, which I can make a bunch of those in a, in a, in a quick, uh, pretty quickly. So, if we only need two Pangan and two milk, apples are easy. Then we could go one, two, one, two. I could do one. Unless I've got more milk here, which could potentially give us two, maybe? Yes. Okay. So, one, two, one, two. All right. So, let me quickly grab some apples. <clears throat> we may need to, uh, we may need to, to do the spiders. Let's see what we got here. And penguin feed, penguin feed, penguin feed, penguin feed. Let me grab out a couple of ghost tatoes. One, two. 
if I checked what the special spice does. It, it's not even here. I, I don't even have it as uh, uh, here. It, it's going to be, it's probably going to be one of those, do you want to use the special, uh, special spice? Uh, kind of, kind of things, and I'm probably not going to be able to actually do anything with it until then. All right, two of those. That's going to give us what? Uh, what is that? Eight or ten, which is not going to be enough. Maybe we can also throw in some bacon, or maybe just maybe another spider. Uh, let's see. Two pangan eggs, two rice. Let me see. Maybe I can. Maybe I can do another. Let's see. Maybe. Uh, actually, no. It would have to be one, two. And then grab the rice. And do one, two, one, two. <clears throat> Come over here, and it would be. Oh. Uh. Have to make the feed, lion. <laughs> I could also do Gamera. I mean, Gamera gives a ton of meat. Uh, spider, spider. I don't think I can do more. I, I think it requires three spider feed. Oh no! I just oh three ghost tatas. So okay, I can do one. So yeah, we'll go ahead and make another spider, and we'll. One, two, three. I gotta, I gotta replenish that here soon. Uh, over here. Do that. All right. And the worst that happens is I can, I can quickly. I'm pretty sure I can quickly make a bunch of Gamera. Uh, I can make Gamera summoner, and I can do that. If, if it comes down to it, question is, do I have the food for? It? Yeah, yeah. I'm okay. It'll be okay. Spider. Penguin. Spider. Alright, buddy. And then let's go get the penguin. Uh, oh, and even here's even some more eggs. So whoop. There we go. And yeah, there we go. And penguin, penguin. Yeah, we're okay for that. So, all right. So you and you, congratulations. You get to go to the day spa. Come on, little buddies. I know you've been working hard and you deserve a nice day at the spa. And uh, you, oh, no, whoops, I, that was a whoops, uh, come here, grab you, grab you, grab you, grab you, come here, you, uh, oh, come on, there we go, come on, all right, guys, it, see, look, it's beautiful, it's a nice little day spa, all right, and here you go, have fun, Okay, and here we go, boing, and there we go. They're having a great day at the day spa, and and oh, don't worry, I'll, t I'll take care of all this extra trash you got lying around here. Don't even worry about that part. Uh, yeah, that's, that's enough. That is enough. All right, do, 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 and we are set. Come forth, dragon. All right, you take care. Uh, I'll I'll take care of this. Don't even don't even worry about it. All right. <sighs> So let me quickly drop off the extra spider right there. Let me go drop off the eggs real quick. I am out of milk, which is not an ideal situation, but it is what it is. 
We, we, we're kind of down to it, so it, it may be that we don't necessarily need it. Okay, now we have a choice. What do we get rid of from our battle, uh, our, our battle fighting here in order to put in the dragon egg? I really hesitate to get rid of any of it, but I think... I think if we're going to get rid of anything, I think it's going to be the Unicorn Delight. Alright, come on. And here we go. Throw that in there. Uh, oh, wait a minute. Do I have pink dough? I do not. Ooh, um... Oh man, what what do I get rid of? Probably the bolt tuna. Cuz when it right co comes right down to a bolt tuna is nice but it doesn't have a multiplier. Okay, let's do that. Let me let me go ahead and grab out this and my unicorn delight. And let's make our pink dough. Oh. No. Oh, two of them. Whoops. I need to. Oopsie. All right, grab that and grab that. All right, and there's our pink dough. So <laughs> now the question is, what do I, what do I substitute for the pink dough? Um, cause this. Oh, actually, I already did. So I already, I forgot. I already took it out. So there we go. Okay. Um, I think this is. I think this is a good battle. A a a good set of battle ingredients. Throw that in there. All right. Uh, any final things? I mean, we can't go to bed yet. We can't go to bed till ten o'clock. I guess I'll go ahead and go over here and and restock up our our fruit supplies. Um, I know that we are short on Irwin and. Uh, and on apples, so barring anything else to do right now, we'll go ahead and stock up. All right, grab, 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 whoop, grab, 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 grab up all the things. I hate that the same button to uh, to pick him up is also the the button for for shaking the trees. It gets a little a little like yeah after a while. <laughs> All right, apple, apple, apples. Boom and Erwin. Go. We may want to feed um, Birch real quick, too. Just to make sure he's topped off. Not that he's, like, starving or anything, but he may as well. Give him a little... A little epic blowfish surprise. Oh, my nose itchy. <sighs> Right there, and you know what? We'll just I'm just gonna use this as overflow. That's fine. Alright, uh let's go ahead and where's my there's the blowfish. Alright, we'll go one, two, three, and we'll just make a little 
little blowfish dinner for him. Do I want to use sauce? Sure, why not? Let's use a sauce. Uh, do I, I mean, these are all like to affect the judges. We'll go ahead and use that one. We're not using it anymore. My nose. Ugh. All right. <clears throat> so sauce and then blowfish, blowfish, and blowfish. All right, we have ourselves a nice little meal for our buddy. Birch is the night. <laughs> So sad you can't talk to the the ghost. Wait. <gasps> Agorius. <laughs> Gosh, bourbon, ha talk about, talk about appropriate. My first thought was, wait a minute, Agorius. <laughs> I never left, though it's taken me a while to stabilize myself enough to leave the painting. I didn't even know what to do. The Infinigon told me to wait it out and tear the pros at this. Not much more I could do. Well, that was some good advice. Messing with the painting wouldn't have helped. But I'm... fine now, which is all that matters. You don't seem all that fresh, on the other hand. Trouble again? <laughs> eh... Since when do you care about my mundane crap? Just to humor me. Mundane crap might be just the thing I need right now. I've realized I've been too disconnected from the world for my own good. If it really is what you want, I'll be happy to vent a bit. Basically, the leader of the Critic Union is trying to enforce a new moral code on every chef in Concordia. Of course, try as I might to just mind my own business, I'm right in the middle of it all. What kind of moral codes would a chef need? Mandatory healthy food. And I guess a few less uh, jokes here and there. That it? Well, yes. Well, it does sound like a no-brainer, right? <laughs> the decent thing to do. But why does it feel so wrong? Hmm. You ever heard of the Starfall Archipelago? No. It was a group of islands newly discovered back in my days in the Imperial Navy. A paradise of virgin land inhabited by a great number of tough, yet a peaceful, relatively primitive people who welcomed us without fear. How nice. Very nice. The only problem, as we found out, is that they were cannibals. Ah, I see. It was a ruse to try to eat you all. No, no, quite on the contrary. They treated us with what they considered a delicacy and an honor. The Elder Roast. That can't be as literal as I'm picturing it. They even had apples in their mouths. Good grief. Sounds horrible. To us, it definitely was. Being presented with a whole roasted grandma is not something you easily forget. However, for them, it was completely normal. It's not like they were killing people to eat them. 
They would eat most of their own dead and thought of it as an honor. They pretty much thought that by e being eaten by the tribe, their soul became part of the younger generations and they could live forever with their descendants in an endless cycle. It was also a way of providing the tribe with food during tough times. And it kept everyone involved and with their eyes on the future. How so? Well, the elderly truly cared about the prosperity of the tribe because they thought they would be a part of it through the younger minds. <laughs> Has to be tough being 90 years old and having to worry about unemployment rates amongst the younger population. Through the cycle, they believed that you would suffer or enjoy your legacy, good or bad, in a very direct way. That kept everyone motivated to make things better for the next generation. What I'm trying to say is they were just minding their own business. They had no ill intent. So you just packed up and left them alone, I assume? Not quite. The Church of Temperus was not very happy about the whole business. Yeah, I can imagine. Because of the sacrilege, I assume. Sure. And because of the health issues. Turns out that eating your elderly and sick is not as healthy as one might imagine. They had quite a color chart of infirmity. It was decided that the custom was barbaric, and it had to end. So we got to it. By engaging in a serene dialogue and letting the best values overcome the bad ones over the course of a few generations? Well, sort of. Uh, we targeted prominent cultural figures and preached the flog out of them. Had some promises here, some presents there, and soon they were ready to accept the Temperian way. Then they declared that eating your grandpa was now forbidden and nailed anyone who disagreed to a coconut tree. Very civil. Your values were clearly superior to theirs. The thing is, it worked. Just a bit of pressure for a mus, and they stopped eating their own pretty quickly without needing to resort to a much bloodier extermination campaign. <coughs> I see. And you're telling me, I guess, because you want to show me that them minding their own business was not as innocuous as it might seem. That and the moral busybodies who took issue in their own hands had good inten intentions, even if their methods were too harsh, and that, in the end, they managed to get results. That reality is just a scale of dark gray tones, and we need to figure out, or we need to find our own answers to make sense of it without obsessing about a good and evil narrative. I suppose that this can be a pretty fair lesson to take from this. I don't know if nailing people to palm trees is very gray at all, but I guess it was a different time, so I get what you mean to say. Very understanding. This lesson might help you to come to terms with this harsh world, eh? However... Did I mention that the Starfall Archipelago got its name from the incredible amount of Rosantium crystals the, the place had? And that the people's uh, cultural beliefs about the endless cycle implied that they wanted to conserve their natural habitat intact so no one could mine it? And did I mention that eating your dead was such an integral part of their philosophy and creed 
that getting rid of the custom pretty much made the whole thing crumble. In a short while, everyone was a greedy, self-centered very willing to help us mine the island and take us to their most sacred places. It didn't take many decades for the place to become dry and useless. I see. The people with power of any kind will tell you a lot of tales, lad. Those culinarum people, the critics, the king. If you are very lucky, there might even be some actual good to take from their machinations. But even in the best of cases, it's always a secondary thing. A happy coincidence. Dig deep enough through their bullflog, and you'll always find cold, hard gold. I'm sure that some of them actually believe in what they're saying. That's when everyone ends up covered in blood, chains, or both. What a bleak way to see the world. Saves you a lot of grief in the long run. But when you just assume every issue is about money and power, you are far more ready to act according. You're obviously trapped in the middle of a power struggle. If you want to come out of it in one piece, just be cynical. I don't want to see you sacrifice yourself because of morals. I'm not used to you giving me life advice. Well, guess that since my actual descendants don't give three flogs about me, I might as well pass on my infinite knowledge to someone else. Even the occult stuff? You want to tinker with that? I don't know. Been messing around with the Infinigon quite a lot lately. I already use their trinkets. I might as well learn a bit more about how they work. I think you should stick to cooking. Empress knows what you might unleash if you actually gain arcane powers. I think he's got a good point there. <laughs> well, I guess we might have something in common then. Perhaps we do, Zest. Perhaps we do. Well... I was not expecting a conversation. Uh, I was gonna come over and I was gonna feed our, our little buddy his dinner, but then I suddenly got that like, whoa, hey, wait a minute moment. So there you go. Here you go, little buddy. All right. And I do believe it is bedtime. <sighs> Interesting day. Good night. All right, care for him. Thank you. Anyone can be a monster.